My name is Darlene Rondo, and I'm the Vice President Best Practices for Leonardo's Online Merchandising Group, and I'm going to be your host for today's special event. And I'd like to welcome everyone around the globe, and I know there are people from all over the world because you've been chiming in the questions box telling me where you're from. So thank you uh, for joining us because for some of you it's very late at night or very early in the morning, so we appreciate that. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording today's webinar, and at the conclusion of our session, we're going to be sending you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording, which you can share or listen to again at your leisure. Additionally, and I see uh, many of you have found it, you have a questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel. So as we move through our discussion today, please feel free to send in your questions, and we're going to try and address them throughout the webinar as well as at the end if we have some time. And we're also going to be tweeting uh, during today's discussion, so please feel free to join in the conversation at hashtag LeoWebinar. Now I'd like to introduce our very special guest, Felix LeBoy. Felix is currently the CEO of Wayblazer. And for those of you not familiar with Wayblazer's technology, it's truly revolutionary and is changing the way travel is shopped and sold because it makes the travel booking process more personalized for the consumer and increases conversion for the provider, in this case, hotels. Felix was formerly president and GM of Sabre Hospitality Solutions and founder and former CEO at eSite Marketing. He was also the executive VP at the Puerto Rico Convention Bureau and has held executive positions at Ritz-Carlton, Weston, and the Four Seasons. Felix is a Cornell University graduate and a member of the Stanford University Parents Advisory Board. And he also, in spite of how busy that all sounds, he enjoys participating in triathlons and has traveled to all seven continents, including Antarctica, and a recent climb to the top of Kilimanjaro. Wow, that must have been very cool. And his favorite travel destination is Madrid, Spain. So welcome, Felix. We're really happy to have you with us today. Thanks, Darlene. Good morning to everyone. We have another notable panelist with us today, Christopher Rigulato, particularly for all the revenue managers with us today. Christopher is the CEO and founder of recently launched Revmar Digital. Revmar focuses on hotel revenue management and digital marketing. He's also responsible for the revenue management success story at the Red South Beach Hotel, which Chris is going to talk to us about today. And he is an experienced director of revenue, sales and marketing, with more than six years of creating and executing on sales and marketing budgets for several hotel properties. In fact, he and I have talked at length about how we're seeing the roles of revenue management and digital marketing converge on property. And no doubt in our minds, anyways, that that uh, trend is going to continue. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Arlene. It's, it's great to be here. So as we always do with our webinars, we start with a poll because we'd like to understand where everyone is coming from in terms of what your challenges are. And as you know, today's webinar is all about content personalization. So if you could click the radio button that um, most course, corresponds most closely to where it is you're at. So the answers to choose from are, I'm not sure how to get started. It's too time consuming. I'm not convinced that it'll generate more direct bookings. And then the last answer is, not sure how to target my multiple audiences. So the answers to your, uh, the answers here are going to help guide our discussion today. It also helps us at Leonardo figure out what kind of educational materials are most helpful to folks. And so the majority of you have voted, so thank you very much for weighing in. And it seems like the number one answer was, I'm not sure how to get started, followed by not sure how to target my multiple audiences. So thanks for weighing in on that. We appreciate it. And let's continue with our discussion. Before 
our speakers begin, I want to explore the visual world we live in. For 32,000 years, people have drawn pictures, but we've actually only written for about 5,000 of those years. J.K. Rowling, arguably the most successful author of our generation, admitted that she actually drew Harry Potter's world before she even wrote it. Undoubtedly, you've noticed all industries are shifting to a visual first approach, and this is especially apparent and important in hospitality, where travelers want to see the anticipated experience before ever stepping foot on your property, but in a way that resonates personally with them. You see, our verbal mind doesn't work without our visual mind. Pictures are the basis of storytelling, but they're often put on the back burner by hotels, trivial trivializing their importance. As Dan Rome wrote, thinking in pictures is in our nature. Sharing those pictures has long been our dream. With the arrival of global con connectivity and in innovative technologies like we're going to hear about today, we have a whole new set of tools to help make that dream come true. Imagine seeing a dozen pictures flash in a fraction of a sec. You might think that it would be impossible to identify any images you see for such a short time. However, a team of neuroscientists from MIT recently found that the human brain can process entire images that the eye sees in as little as 13 milliseconds. This is one of the first evidences of such rapid processing speed by the brain. The fact that you can do this at high speeds indicates that what vision does is it finds concepts. That's what the brain is doing all day long, trying to understand what we're looking at, says Mary Potter. And that um, is totally a coincidence that this Mary Potter is the same that J.K. Rowling wrote about. She was the woman, the MIT professor, who uh, was responsible for the brain and cognitive science uh, study that MIT did. Every day at work, school, or in life, we're bombarded with information via our senses. And it's up to the brain to receive, process, store, and access that information as we need it. And the power to do all this comes from the brain's core cognitive skills that start with what we see. According to VentureBeat.com, Sephora's commercial success on the image-centric site Pinterest found that their people spend more, and not just a little bit more, 15 times more than their fans on Facebook. Hotel marketers taking data, both structured, like pricing, amenities, and availability, and unstructured data, like images, descriptions, and reviews, combined with context, meaning what kind of a trip are they taking, could no doubt dwarf Sephora's success. And you're going to hear more about intelligent personalization from Felix right now. Felix, I am going to pass the keyboard and mouse over to you. There you go. Thanks, Darlene. So as, as you know, as Darlene mentioned, um, AI or artificial intelligence continues to evolve and become smarter, uh, more effective, and it's applicable to uh, you know, other industries. And let me make sure that this moves here. Darlene, I'm trying to click on. Um, there we go. There we go. Sorry, there was a little technical difficulty there. But so artificial intelligence. Um, so what is artificial intelligence, right? We see artificial intelligence in robots. We see it on websites. We see it on mobile phones. But really, artificial intelligence is computing that is cognitive and that can continue to learn. It's technology that thinks like a human and can understand the nuances of language. It can actually understand natural language, like you would if you were talking to a human being. AI can read text, like trip reviews, blogs, even images. So in our company's case, we're teaching AI the domain of travel and the hotel industry. And it's also important to note that there are many companies that are doing, you know, developing AI technology. You, you know, many that you've heard of, like Google, Facebook, and Apple. But even in the travel space, um, 
you know, Expedia mentioned the other day at a conference that they're working on AI. So I think it's really relevant for the attendees on this call that what are we doing uh, to use AI to our benefit? Uh, because it's, it's here to stay. So it's now possible to take what we've learned about AI and cognitive computing um, to be able to really, as Darlene mentioned, deliver fast, accurate, personal recommendations and apply it to the travel industry. Uh, over the last few years, there's been a lot of effort around improving the content for your hotel online. And then with these new intelligent uh, engagement capabilities, customers can now interact with hotel or travel company websites and apps in more meaningful ways. With us, we're entering the age of intelligent content. So high quality content now must become intelligent content. Personalization is key, and consumers are interested in, in really what's important to them, not what's important to everybody else. So at Wayblazer, we see that there are four main components in, in personalizing travel. One is hotel recommendations, you know, which are the right hotels for the right person at the right time, images, which are the right images, for that particular traveler at the right time, insights or maybe content, information about the property uh, that's relevant for that particular trip, and then local area knowledge, which is what's going on around the hotel or resort that's important. And today we're going to really focus on, on the images and the insights. As, as you know, many of you know from your experience, the, the, as Darlene mentioned, the most relevant images are going to really make you feel comfortable about, is this the right hotel for me? Because I see that it's, uh, you know, see if it's a resort. I see that there's a golf course there. So let's start with an example uh, of a trip to Vail, Colorado. We can say I'm looking to take a, a trip with my wife for a romantic ski trip, uh, and we're going there for a long weekend. Currently, if I did a search on an OTA or maybe even a brand site uh, or went to the hotel directly, the Evergreen Lodge, you know, might be an option. I get to the tile there and I have some information about um, that it's, you know, warm and friendly service. I can walk everywhere. This is what people see today. Uh, you type in two adults, zero kids one room, and then you have, let's, let's call that January 5th through 8th is a, is a weekend, long weekend. But if it was AI enabled, we'd now be able to see the same information about the Evergreen Lodge, but you notice that a couple of items have changed. You see that there's an image of a couple, you know, they're skiing, there's snow, and also there's, there's insights or content that relate to um, information that maybe a couple will be more interested in. So on the left-hand side, you see a generic photo of the property and a generic information about what's going on there, warm and friendly service, et cetera. But on the right-hand side, you see an image that's much more relevant to what that couple might be looking for. So we've really pulled out, artificial intelligence has pulled out the concepts of couple, romantic, and winter and presented the right images and the right content. And Felix, there's a question from uh, Anne in the audience, and she wants to know, how are you able to do that? So great question, Anne. <clears throat> so as I mentioned before, what artificial intelligence can do is it can understand that, so let's say in our case, what we would do is we would absorb or, uh, you know, pull all this information from the company that we're working with, and we're able to, just by knowing that it's two adults, we can infer, right, the artificial intelligence can infer that that's probably a romantic weekend, um, or, and we can infer that based on the date that that's a weekend, right, we can infer that it's in January, right, and that's a ski, that's a place uh, in Vail, we can infer that they're going there for some type of skiing or winter sport. So those are all elements of, or concepts that we've pulled out of the content and the information that we're gathering from that user 
to be able to serve up the right information. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. So now let's say we're going back to Vail, Colorado, <clears throat> and instead of going with my wife, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm now going with my two children, and I'm going in the summer. So this might still be a viable option. The other, you know, people like to go to Vail in the summertime. So now let's say I put in this information, and I get again, I get sort of the generic image. I get the same information in terms of one and friendly service, and I can walk everywhere. But if it was enabled with artificial intelligence, I'd now see different images and different content. So the idea here is that what, what we see in hotels around the world is that regardless of the input, right, two adults on a trip by themselves or two adults and two kids, um, that's obviously a family trip, we're, as the hotel industry, we're giving everyone the same generic information. In this example here on the right, we see, well, it's summertime. I'm traveling with my kids. Why not give them a picture with children in the photo? You can see it's sunny there. You can see it's playing miniature golf. Uh, why not give them information that's relevant to that a family trip, you know, mini golf and activities next door, or there's a heated outdoor pool? So in this sense, we're pulling out concepts of kids, family, and summer and again, providing that relevant content and information that's, that's much more likely to convert. Excellent. Um, Felix, another question from the audience from Ross. He said, this is great, but, is this cap but where is this capability available? Is it on my own site? Is it on the OTAs, the brand sites? Well, so as I mentioned before, uh, great questions. As I mentioned before, a lot of other companies are developing artificial intelligence. Um, so, you know, in our case, we're at Wayblazer, we're, we're one of the few, if only, companies that are providing artificial intelligence to the travel industry in particular. So, uh, for example, this is what we're working with our customers to, to bring this to life, right? We're saying uh, you can implement this type of technology into your website, into your brand, um, because that, that's what you know the next level of, of in, integration will be. Uh, we don't. Yeah, some some some. Uh, I think some OTAs, as I mentioned before, I know Expedia is talking about how they're trying to bring this to uh, to life. Um, but it's, it's in its early days, its early stages, and you'll start to see more and more you know development around this. Excellent. We have another question coming in from Ivana. She wants to know, are you able to also personalize the results for first-time visitors? Uh, and where is the personal information coming from? Or, or so that's is there the, Yeah. OK, so that's the beauty of, of artificial intelligence. In this case, as I showed, we in this example that I showed, there there is no. We don't know anything about the traveler. We don't know that it's Darlene and she lives in Dallas and that she, you know, likes to stay in X types of hotels. All we know is what the input was. We knew that they put put in two adults and two children. They put in the dates, and you know where, where they were looking to stay. So you can you can start with that with an anonymous personalization, right? By just knowing information. Uh, of the input that's coming in, we can then infer certain things because that's what artificial intelligence does. It thinks like a human. Now, <clears throat> to the question, if you now have the ability to actually apply personalization to someone in particular. Now, let's say you're a brand and you have a loyalty program and we know that it's, you know, Jane Doe, she lives in Austin, she has two, two kids and is married likes to stay in X type of you know, luxury hotel and likes feather pillows, et cetera, et cetera, whatever information you have in, in your loyalty program, we can actually you know, take that information, apply artificial intelligence to it, and then even, even provide better results, right? The recommendations would be even more powerful if we knew more information about that traveler. But to start, you can still do it uh, to a certain level anonymously. 
And just one last question, Felix, before we continue from Dorothy. She wants to know how you're associating the, uh, the input parameters with the image itself. How do, you, how do you go fetch that image that matches? That's, that's um, you, so in our case, again, um, we would take the information from the customer that we're working with, all of the images, all the content, all the reviews, et cetera, and then when that input goes through to adults, to children, we know, hey, we know that's a family trip. Let's present family-related photos. Oh, if someone's requesting, you know, two adults on a weekend, we probably can infer that's a romantic weekend. Let's provide images and content that's relevant for that type of travel. So you've organized the images according to those segments? Well, it's, again, it's artificial intelligence, so it does it right. dynamically. So it's, it's kind of Got dynamic it. merchandising, so it's on the yep. fly. Whatever the input is, then we change the results then. Gotcha. Great. Thank you. We'll let you uh, continue. Sure. So, so really, you know, how do we bring this to life? And I think um, for, for every hotel, there are many types of guests and travelers coming to visit for various purposes, right? So people might, might come for business. They might come for a couple's trip. They might come for a family. They might, might come for, you know, on a trip by themselves. And now we, we also can extract these concepts um, by understanding what images, reviews, content, and local area information uh, they might be looking for. Uh, so, for example, winter equals snow. And so now all of a sudden we know that we could show winter-related images, things like that. Uh, we can then match uh, the segments and concepts for each traveler for each type of search. So we know that two adults with zero kids is a couple. If it's December, we know it's winter. We can start to infer certain you know, information and images. Um, and so the idea is, is that we're able to really show more relevant images to the individual consumer um, by having all this information, right? So if we know it's a couple going in January, let's let's show them an image of of some you know a couple that's skiing right in the winter. Why show them the picture of the front of the hotel, right? That's not really going to make me understand that that's that's the right hotel for me. So by showing the right image, the right content to the traveler when, when you know, based on when they're traveling, we think that this will yield a lot of benefit. Um, you know, Skift recently quoted, it's important to use images to tell a compelling story. It shows the consumer how staying at your ho hotel will make their trip a success. So, you know, in, in the example here, it's two adults in the winter. Let's show them an image that that makes them feel like, yes, I want to be at that location. On the right-hand side, it's two adults and two children. Um, you know, let's, in the summer, let's show them a, a, a photo with those types of images. And, and what, 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 you know, to kind of wrap up, I think the, the bottom line is that artificial intelligence is allowing um, this type of, of result set for recommendations. We know more and more that, especially, you know, the younger generation, um, and more and more people want personalization. They want they don't want what everyone else is getting. They want what it's right for them. And so I think this will really have an impact on engagement of your customers in your distribution channels. You know whether it's your website or your mobile. We believe that this will engage uh, increase customer trust. We believe that this will impact direct bookings. I mean if you see statistics out there. If you, the more images you have and the right images, it's, it's increasing, in, um, you know, conversion. Uh, the right content that you have is increasing conversion. You get a better perceived value because you're really putting the right information at the right time. And, and finally, you know, you're increasing your brand loyalty and, and hopefully, hopefully keeping a, a customer for a long time. Excellent. Thanks so much, Felix. Judging by all the questions coming in from our audience, Clearly, uh, we're striking a topic that is not only of uh, growing interest, but real value to the hospitality industry. So thank you for sharing that. We have a couple of other questions that have come in, but um, we'll move on and, and take those at the end. So 
just to wrap up what Felix was talking about, first of all, I think one of the most exciting things we learned during Felix's presentation was that the next generation of computing, AI or artificial intelligence, is actually here. Not only is it here, but it's already starting to make an impact on travel and hospitality. Today's customers and travelers, as Felix just said, particularly uh, younger travelers are looking for engaging, relevant, and personalized experiences that can now be delivered online through this type of technology. Wayblazer is a travel company that is leveraging AI and IBM Watson to help every traveler find the perfect hotel. And they're delivering this technology to travel companies. They can do it via an API or a uh, hosted platform. If you'd like more information on AI and the future of travel, please go to their website and we'll show you the contact information at the end of this session. And uh, you can download a white paper that will give you a deeper look into the technology and its application. And uh, you can also reach out to them to continue the conversation. So thanks again, uh, Felix. Uh, we'll uh, have a couple other questions at the end. Now I'd like to reintroduce Christopher Rigolato, and uh, Christopher is going to talk to us about personalized content from his perspective at the hotel level. So Christopher, thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I have to say, Felix, that was some great stuff, uh, very insightful. As the revenue and marketing manager, I would want to use that technology so I can be able to, at least on some level, compete with the big R&D budgets that the OTAs have, so that way I can be able to drive more revenue my direct channels. Great stuff. Good. So the challenges in creating personalized marketing. So we all know by experience where our customers come from with our standard demographic information. And then you would usually create some sort of content and be telling the story of your property and how it stands out from your competitors for those potential customers. The challenge here is creating a campaign, whether that be social, email, display, etc and then telling that story that leads to your goals. Uh, it's important that you and your team are clear on the goals that you want to achieve, whether that be branding, clicks, but most likely your goal is to generate some sort of revenue uh, for your property at the lowest possible cost of acquisition. Um, sure, demographics tell us where the guests come from, their gender, age, income, etc. but those not really tell us who they are. Uh, that's where I believe psychographics come in. Psychographics let us dig deeper, find out what truly makes buyers buy, what makes them tick. Uh, and we do it by studying their buying and browsing habits, hobbies, and values. And this allows us to create personalized and targeted content. Um, to truly have an effective campaign, I believe that you need to understand the combination of both demo and psychographic data. And this begins to mold your buyer persona. So that way when you begin to create content through storytelling, it's more clear and precise. Uh, for hotels, it's not uncommon to have more than one buyer persona, whether that be families, couples, singles, etc. It's important to take these personas and build your story through social, mobile, email, and desktop, desktop campaigns and experiences. And Chris, it's interesting when you talk about multiple personas, that was one of our poll questions at the beginning, is one of the challenges that people have is create, they don't know how to create these multiple uh, personas for their property. So perhaps uh, through this you can share some light on that for us. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of have that uh, as an example here towards kind of the end. So the way we kind of get our, our uh, persona is by studying our clients, you know, either whether that be, you know, asking them where they're coming from or, you know, interviewing clients, whether that be on an on-site survey, send them an email campaign of survey, kind of asking them specific questions, you know, why are they traveling? Uh, because, you know, demographic tells you the agent, but it doesn't tell you the why they're traveling. So I think if you're able to kind of get more information directly from the client, that would help build at least some data points. Or you can also dig deeper into your analytics, um, you know, whether that be Google, I'm not sure there's different levels of where you can dig deeper to kind of see their browsing habits. And then you can kind of... As you, assign. yeah. And and as you said, I think you have a, an example in a couple of slides we can uh, dive into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Beautiful. All right, so social media and mobile. Uh, for social media and mobile, again, there are two different experiences uh, compared to desktop sites. 
Uh, for mobile and social user, you should really focus on rich media, uh, that being photos, videos, 360 virtual tours, uh, to capture their attention immediately, but also to keep them engaged. So that way, engage on your ad so they ultimately share that content or make a buying decision. Um, I found that using guest-generated content, imagery, reviews, works well as it's more organic and less filtered. Plus, you combine that with a couple hotel-generated videos and photos, selling those guests on why your hotel is the only hotel they should consider when staying in your destination. So there's a lot of hotels, for example, in Miami Beach. You now there's a lot of uh, saturation, many new hotels, many new supply. What can you do to stand out? Being personal allows you to tell your story and stand out. So yeah, that's the next slide. So personalized offer. So how do you do that via offer? So we all, we all have hotels that have many same promotions, stay longer, save more, vacation, advanced purchase, etc. So how do you personalize your offers? Uh, like I said before, first you have to obtain the guest information. Uh, when you create your psychographic data, you, know, you obtain it by interviewing your clients through email, online or on-site surveys, or investigating your web analytics uh, to see which, what has or hasn't worked to get people to click or buy. As, as an example, no? Uh, you know locals tend to visit either on weekends or other travel periods, so you create a staycation offer using the correct travel and booking periods, which includes an attractive discount and a value add. But the formal, the formal doesn't really take off. So you ask yourself, why didn't it work? The GM is asking you that there's a failed offer. Could it have been the discount wasn't attractive enough? Or was the value add had no actual value to that guest persona you're targeting? You can measure this by looking at the number of clicks, views, bounce, rate, and ultimately looking at the bookings made. I mean, if you're able to run an A-B test version of the promo, this will give a greater insight. Where you run one, one promo has certain wording, another one has a different picture, etc. But maybe instead, it may have been that your, your buying persona isn't interested in a deep discount and that bottle of champagne, but instead values quality over price, finds fulfillment in spending family time and wants to disconnect from work. A more attractive offer might have been offering that non-discounted, upgraded, and more expensive room, which has a jet at top and more space to relax, a credit to either an on-site spa or off-site, family activity, and a spa treatment. That kind of personalized content might generate the clicks and revenue your team is after. So we have to, again, create your, your persona, target them on what really makes them tick. And Chris, I think that this discussion highlights what you and I have talked about in, because what here what you're doing is you're taking the data and the analytics piece, which generally um, will come from the director of revenue management, combine that with the psychographics and the personas that would be developed by the marketer. And putting the two of those together is really when you start to maximize your offer and really make them work for you. Right, yeah, no, so like you and I have talked about how, uh, and, and at the end I kind of do talk about it, but how, yeah, you know. Yeah, we have, we have it, an example it, it, at the end, I think, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but typically, you know, hotels, they kind of work, marketing works on one side, revenue on the other side. They need to work together to be able to create this content and succeed. Um, so here we have an example of how it works for SEO, you know, on it, which is the most important channel and the least cost of acquisition, or should be the least cost of acquisition for you. Uh, for SEO, the way you would build your story is with great copywriting. I believe in great copywriting, and people think it's dead, and I don't believe so. I think copywriting combines, is able to combine your, desired short and long tail keywords for SEO and blend it seamlessly into your storytelling. Uh, to do this, I highly recommend hiring a professional web copywriting company that can capture your message and convey that story using the keywords you want to have so you can rank better organically. As we know, the better targeted and personalized your website SEO is, you reduce your cost of acquisition and subsequent bounce rate, which, which then in turn increases your visitor time and page views improve your conversion, transactions, and ultimately make more revenue. That is, that is the end game. Um, and I think I have an example on the next page. Yeah, there's, the a, question, there's a okay. question coming in from the uh, audience. David wants to know, can you give us an example of a long-tailed keyword versus a short-tailed keyword? Okay, so for example, so for Miami Beach, you know, a short-tailed a short keyword is Miami Beach Hotel. 
a long tail keyword can be uh, Miami Beach hotels with oceanfront rooms or Miami Beach hotels uh, located by the restaurant. So you have to kind of come up with those keywords uh, that are longer that maybe, you know, you're going to have viewer impressions of it, I guess you would call it, but at the end, it's another long tail keyword. It's going to help your SEO. So coming up with long tail keywords is just a creative way, you know, like if you're searching for something, you know, put yourself in the consumer side. How would you search for a hotel? You can put just South Beach Hotel or South Beach Hotels with family deals. That could be a long tail keyword, or et cetera. And that's why you were saying your comment, that's your least expensive cost of acquisition because you're using, you know, all really, um, you know, Google as an example does, right? What they value the most is serving up the answer to the consumer's question. So if, exactly. as you point out, if the consumer's typing in hotels in Miami Beach, uh, within walking distance of Ruth Chris. If, right. if you have developed your copy with those phrases in there, Google goes, hey, that's like the best answer to that consumer's question, so you're going to rise to the top of those rankings. Exactly. exactly. And it's just another way of how you can use the keyword because, you know, there is a certain weight of Google allows you a density that they allow you to use certain keywords. So this allows you to use the keyword again, but while not, you know, increasing your density, which you know Google will penalize you if you use the keyword too many times. This allows you to kind of get around that in, in the correct way. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you. I think often there's uh, too little emphasis on developing the right copy and the right HTML on the back end. To maximize search, and I and I think largely it's because you know, and I've blogged about this recently. You know, there's a, a lot of uh, hype around SEO is like this hocus pocus stuff, and it's like you know, DNA sequencing, right? No one can understand it. But you know what? At the end of the day, simply put, if you just answer the question the consumer's asking, you're half half the way there. Exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about ranking on Google. So, I mean, all the, so as an example, so all the content you have on your site, the storytelling by text, the consumers don't really spend their time reading that much. That's more for Google for ranking. Uh, consumers want more visuals. Uh, we're in a generation of visual imagery, videos, 360 tours. So uh, it's important to, to focus on that as well. So I know we're an example. You know, uh, as an example, one of my clients, uh, they were using the hotel's proximity. To a major to major attractions at their main selling point, they were ranking well on Google, had 34% bounce rate, but had low engagement. They had low page views, session duration, conversions. We realized that they were not telling their story to differentiate themselves from all the other hotels in the area, which also have great proximity to the same attractions. So what can set us apart? So we evaluated and created a buying persona. Uh, we use this same and the same interview techniques as specified before and digging into analytics and using the same ranking keywords as we always use before. But we told a story about how the property is family friendly, great for kids, to have fun while mom, mom being the main driver persona at this property, can relax while attending the attractions nearby. When we did this, traffic was reduced by 3%. One could say, oh, you have less traffic, you're doing a bad job. No, but you lowered your bounce rate. It's 29%, meaning that our net visitor was actually increased. Our session duration increased by 8% and conversion rates increased by over 30%. Uh, we improved the quality of our visitors and therefore we optimized our page for conversions by making this change. It didn't take a lot of time, it just took getting the data and applying it to how we can sell best to our buyer persona. So it was more targeted and because it was more targeted, uh, it appealed to fewer people, but the people that it did appeal to were uh, were the ideal guests. Exactly. It was more targeted. So instead of selling apples to everybody, I'm going to sell apples to people who really appreciate green apples or red apples. That's another, that's another example. So yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. And I, I think that this whole solution dovetails perfectly with the conversation we just had about artificial intelligence, right? And so when all this stuff gets put together, it becomes hugely powerful to really start to uh, drive results. And speaking of results. Yeah, so on average, uh, my clients that, you know, hire me and my company to manage both the revenue and digital marketing uh, and execute them, we typically see a 265% increase in website revenue. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. No. Strategies are put in place. Actions are taken, executed. This could take you know, a couple months or a year. You know, this takes time to create and really let the asset, the asset being the, the website, mature. Uh, on average, these hotels, when they do have this increase, they go from hotel production, hotel production being a combination of website, phone, walk-ins, of sub-30%, very OTA-dependent, to having over 65% hotel contribution over two years. So we were able to flip the script, you can, you can save, and be able to generate more direct traffic from the website, uh, and then generate more revenue at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, sometimes hotels, they reach a certain, I know I didn't add this to the slides, they reach a certain pricing power point where you know, the consumer is no longer willing to pay more for a price. So how can you generate more ADR and rep for for your property? It's going to be through segmentation. And this is where it's important to have your website producing because in Miami Beach, as an example, we see it a lot. The market is reaching a plateau of pricing power. The only way to get ADR is through segmentation. So it's very important to focus on your direct channels by using AI, as Felix showed, and by using personalized content. Excellent, Chris. Hey, uh, Ross from the audience has a question. He wants you to explain a little bit more about how you redirect commissionable, commissionable revenue from the OTAs to the direct channels. Can you talk a little bit more about that? No, so there's many ways to do it. Uh, a lot of OTAs that I talk to, they think the OTA is our enemy. Uh, the OTA is not an enemy, they're just a, a channel of which we have to drive the consumer away from, not away from, but drive them to our site. You know, studies have shown by HSMAI, PKF, STR, that seven out of 10 customers who find you on an OTA are gonna Google you. Now when they Google you, make sure you rank well, and then your website has the correct value proposition. Value proposition can be, you know, anything from the correct pricing point. So you should have rate parity, for example. So uh, you have the same rate across the board, but maybe if they book direct, they get a free welcome drink, or they get a free upgrade. Make sure you're telling that value proposition clearly to the customer. That's one step um, of how you can kind of redirect the contribution is by taking steps like that of using the OTA billboard to your advantage. You're never going to outspend Expedia or Priceline, Booking.com. They spend billions of dollars on advertising. Use the billboard. Make sure when those seven out of ten customers Google you, you rank well, and that your website it's clear with the message that conveys to the customer to buy of why they should buy with you and not Expedia. And then there's other ways of you know programs, other programs that you can do on property uh, to get those customers to convert uh, from an LTA to a direct. Yeah, so advice from the leaders. No, so like I said, tailor content to your guests, know who they are, where they're buying and browsing from, and target them in those areas. Uh, for desktop shoppers, as we talked about, combo videos, photos, and descriptions use um, a lot of customer uh, reputation uh, reviews. Customers, they do believe in that, so make sure that you tell the best story. Uh, mobile shoppers, they spend less time on the site, but they are converting more. Google has shown that mobile searches have already surpassed 2015, I believe. Make sure that we have the right message there. Uh, target and personalize your website. and personalize your SEO. That way you can reduce your mouse rate, increase quality of visitor, and reduce your cost of acquisition. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. And again, tons of questions from the audience, so that uh, is an indication that we're hitting on all the uh, right topics and we're sharing information that you guys want to listen to. And I always find it helpful to hear from a hotel marketer who's been there, done that, and actually achieved results. And today, Chris shared his personal story about the challenges he faced in realizing his goals, suggesting that we dive into psychographics uh, 
in addition to demographics that we have easy access to, to develop guest profiles and personas. And then once you have that, develop the hotel story around these guest personas uh, to, to resonate with them uniquely and then make sure that story is told consistently across social channels, mobile channels, email campaigns, the consumer desktop experience. And I think you bring up a good point, Chris, is yeah, we don't like paying those big commissions to the OTAs, but the fact is consumers are going to go there and so you know, leverage that and then give them a reason to come back and book with you directly. And then, so once you have that strategy, uh, build your promotions around it to really drive uh, occupancy during those need periods. And uh, finally, I think digital marketers be one with your revenue manager. I think that's what uh, Chris's message is and uh, codependence is going to lighten the load for everyone, and it's really, bottom line, going to help improve results. So thanks again, Chris. We appreciate it. And we have another poll that we'd like the audience to weigh in on, and that is tell us, based on today's content, whether you'd attend a future webinar. That gives us an indication as to whether you liked what we shared with you today or, you know, you might like something different. So thanks, everybody, for weighing in. And um, this could be a first. Right now we're sitting at about 100%. Wow, that's great. Uh, let's see. So, okay, so we're at just over uh, 9 for sure and about 10% don't know. So thanks, everybody. We really appreciate that input. It helps us understand um, whether we're on target with our content. And so uh, a little bit about Leonardo. Visley is a complete multi-channel hotel digital marketing system that is built for hotels and alternative accommodation providers, giving you control of your digital marketing and empowering you to create, publish, update, and maintain visual first hotel websites, mobile sites, social media apps, and digital brochures for third-party travel apps. And, and Chris and um, Red South Beach is a client of ours. Visly, the digital marketing platform, makes it better by being able to reduce your marketing costs through low monthly subscription fees, makes it easy to manage digital marketing without a lot of technical skills. It helps eliminate the long turnaround times that are sometimes associated with third parties making updates. You can centralize all your digital marketing in a single system. It gives you complete control of your digital marketing as opposed to relying on someone else. And all of this digital marketing system is purpose-built for conversions to maximize those results and generate revenue. More than 4,000 hotels and accommodation providers around the globe are currently subscribed to Visly since its introduction to the market just over a year ago and are experiencing results, as Chris just talked to us about. So uh, next month, webinar is uh, visual storytelling to get more than your fair share of bookings and we're really psyched to have marketing expert and founding dean of NYU's hospitality school Dr. Layla Rack with us so we hope that you join us in May and as I said earlier we're going to be sending you a thank you for joining us email with a link to the recording which you can listen to again or share with your colleagues so I'm going to keep this contact information up. We have time for a question or two. And uh, this one, Felix, is for you from Christian. And Christian wants to know, can artificial intelligence be applied to uh, showing seasonal amenities? Can it suggest different amenities based on the time of year? Felix? Yes. I mean, yes, this is Felix. So, it really depends on how, what content you have, what information you have about these amenities, and how, for example, in our case, we would ingest that information. 
to be able to then provide it out the way you want it. So really, um, as Darlene mentioned, we, we use a set of APIs, which is basically technology that allows you then to incorporate however um, the rules that you want to uh, govern for your particular uh, hotel. So yes, those are all within, within the realm of technology. Excellent. Thanks, Felix. And uh, Chris, this last question is for you. And it's from Julian in the audience, and he wants to know, you made a comment that your narrator, narrative can be longer on a desktop. Can you explain why that is? I mean, historically, you're looking at analytics. Um, it's something that you look at the data. Desktop users tend to spend more time on the site. Um, and that's because probably they have more time on it. You know, they're either at work browsing, or you know, uh, at home on the computer, maybe doing some work and just have more time to browse and do more research. And we see that. I mean, on analytics, desktop users spend maybe about 20, 30 percent more time on the site, see more pages, um, and have about the same almost, and have a good amount of conversions and revenue. Mobile users spend less time, visit less sites, but they convert just as well. Uh, and that's because it's just the trend of where mobile is heading. People are using the mobile phones more. We should not ignore desktop. Desktop is still the number one leader of, of having guests engaged um, in terms of spending more time and, and telling a deeper story where you can use text uh, and, and more rich media. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, I think it does, Chris. Thanks so much. And uh, a lot of you have asked for the contact information of both Felix and Christopher, you'll uh, have that on your screen now and also in our follow-up we'll uh, be sure to mention that and you can reach out to them through email, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, a number of ways. So thank you audience, you've been terrific. Tons of questions which we always appreciate because it really helps us understand what your challenges are and how we can help you best. Thank you, Felix LaVoy from Wayblazer. Super uh, interesting and helpful information. Christopher Rigolato uh, from Revmar, uh, also really insightful stuff. And I know hearing specifically from a hotel marketer is really helpful to the audience. So thank you, everyone. Today is Thursday, which is the new Friday. So have a good weekend. Talk to everybody next time. Bye-bye.